Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you through Christ and we give you thanks, Lord, for this day and for this time. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would be present and that you, Lord God, would do something wonderful in this time. God, we thank you for your word. We pray in the name of Jesus that, God, it would produce fruit in our lives. I pray that um, you would find us as good soil in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, whatever is said, Lord God, that uh, you would use it. I pray, Father, that you would stand in me and that you would deliver, Lord God, what you want uh, to be delivered to your people. And I pray, Father God, that you'll be present and that you'll be pleased and that you'll be glorified. Now, your word says that where two or more gathered in your name, you are in the midst as well. So we, by faith, believe that you are here. And Father, I pray that uh, you would make that evident uh, in any way that you see fit. Uh, again, we acknowledge you as God. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. So to the title of today's um, message is The Call to Ordinary Living. The Call to Ordinary Living. And our first text that we'll look at is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verse 11. In our culture today, I think sometimes there can be too much of an emphasis on being something or someone great. Though I do believe that people should aspire to achieve their fullest potential, I believe that there is an undervaluing of the excellence of living an ordinary life. And even in the Christian community, I believe that this type of communication has increased in recent times. But today I want to focus on the value of living an ordinary life. And many places in scripture speak to obeying God in the ordinary things in life. So I just want to take some time today to give precedent to that, to give value to that, to give perspective to that. The first scripture I'd like to, for us to look at is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Now I'm reading from the New Living Translation, but it reads, Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we instructed you before. Now this is just one of many scriptures that I believe point to just a simple life, the ordinary life, and how that, how um, God instructs us towards that. Now, that's not to say that people can't have um, different types of life uh, and varying degrees of simplicity in their lives, but just as a general underlying principle, um, the ordinary things in life. God works through and God calls us to. And so if you're taking notes, the first point will be an ordinary or quiet life gains the respect of unbelievers. So we're going to look at what uh, we're going to look at some different situations where people were called to ordinary living. Um, but one reason why ordinary living or simply simple living is important is because it gains the respect of unbelievers. Now, again, going back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, uh, we'll look at verse 11 and verse 12. Paul writes, make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we instructed you before. Verse 12, then people who are not Christians will respect the way you live and you will not need to depend on others. So here the Apostle Paul is teaching the believers in Thessalonica how to conduct their lives. He says they should live quiet lives, mind their own business, working with their hands. But notice the next verse as well. He mentions that unbelievers will respect the way that they live because they um, will, will respect the way they live and they will not need to depend on others. 
Um, we see this also in um, other uh, Pauline letters where he says, if you have a, if you are a slave or basically if you're an employee, respect your bosses. And that will make the way of Christ attractive. And so it's not in the extraordinary displays of sacrifice or giving or preaching or things like that. But it's in the ordinary ways that God draws and the, the way of Christ is made attractive. Um, just a little more background knowledge. Uh, the word quiet life or um yeah, quiet life there. I don't know how to say this correctly in Greek. I'm going to do my best. Hezikazo. Hezikazo. And what it basically means in this context is to lead a quiet life, set of those who are not running hither and thither, but stay at home and mind their business. And he says that because in that, in that uh, community there in Thessalonica, where Paul was writing to, there were believers who were um, who had begun to meddle in other people's business who had begun to um, be idle um, and he addresses that by telling them that they need to you know lead a quiet life minding their own business um, working with their own hands and that would provide for themselves I want to give you this quote as well Saint Francis he said preach the gospel and if necessary use words and unbelievers are often more influenced by how they see us live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis rather than what we may say or in our preaching. So in application, have you begun to meddle in the lives of others? Have you begun to run hither and thither? Life does have its busy, busy times, and it is right to take an interest in others' lives. But check to see if these things have gone beyond their proper proportion. It's right that we should, you know, have an interest in the lives of others and check on others and things like that. But see if it's gone too too far or, or too frequent. Um, and also check and see if your busyness running hither and thither has gotten to, uh, to a point where it's beyond what is its proper proportion. And even me personally, I had to evaluate that, that, you know, I need to take time to be still. The hither and thither um, had gotten too much. So that's the first scripture there, 1 Thessalonians 4, 11. Now, the second point, if you want to put this under a point, uh, the Israelites called to simply to a simple, ordinary life. The Israelites call to a simple ordinary life and there'll be several scriptures here again you don't have to try to write the entire scripture but just simply take note of the reference first one deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 3 deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 3 this is god speaking to his people he says listen closely israel and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 18. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord your the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Notice he said, he didn't say do what is impressive in the Lord's sight, but simply just do what is right and good. So all will go well with you. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 28. He says, be careful to obey all my commands so that all will go well with you and uh, with you and your children after you, because you will be doing what is good and pleasing to the Lord your God. So in all these things, I think about God's vision for his people and his promise that they will be able to dwell in the land. He says that all will go well with them. And what that is, is a, is a picture of just a simp uh, simply living life. Um, and everything is well. Everything is, is good. Everything is appropriate. He says their, their, their um, 
their crops won't fail. You know, they'll have protection. And it's no, it's not a image of being something great or, or trying to, you know, being the, the top of the totem pole, so to speak. But it's an ordinary life that is well, secure, um, and blessed. And so the Israelites were called to that. Just a simple, ordinary life, obeying God in the simple things. He gave them their um, laws about, you know, what to eat and various things. But it was, it was just a simple, simple way of life. And so the application to us would be, you know, what are the simple things in our own lives that God is calling to, calling us to? It may be just simple times of prayer, it may be just simple and how we simply in how we treat uh, people closest to us or people at work and things like that. It's the simple things. So that's the Israelites call to an ordinary life. Next, John's call to an ordinary life. John's call to an ordinary life. Now, this is not the Apostle John, but this is John the Baptist. And our scripture here is Luke chapter 3, verse 7 through 14. Luke chapter 3, verse 7 through 14. Beginning in verse 7, when the crowds came to John the, for baptism, he said, you brood of snakes, <laughs> who warned you to flee God's coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. They thought that they were just saved automatically by being a descendant of Abraham or that they were saved from God's judgment. He says, that means nothing for nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Verse nine. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, even the tree, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. The crowds ask, what should we do? Now, here's a point of, you know, application. They, they want to respond to the message that they're hearing. Now, notice what John says in verse 11. John replied, if you have two shirts, give one to the poor. If you have food, share with those who are hungry. He didn't necessarily say start an organization. He didn't necessarily say go on a campaign for this or that. But simply, what are the simple things that you can do that's already around you? Opportunities that are already around you. Simple, ordinary things. Now look at um, uh, the tax collectors in verse 12. He says, even corrupt tax collectors came to be baptized and asked, teacher, what should we do? In verse 13, he says, collect no more taxes than the government requires. An ordinary thing. Just simply live your or life ordinarily and properly. He didn't tell them to, um, you know, like I said, develop a campaign for Raising so, such and such money, thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. Just simply do what your job entails. Verse 14, what should we do? Ask some soldiers. John replied, don't exhort, extort money or make false accusations and be content with your pay. So in all these things, we see that, God's, uh, that John just simply tells them repent towards an ordinarily, ordinary and proper life. That that's pleasing to God. That is um, that holds value in God's sight. And I think that sometimes that we lose, or there can be a, um, a misunderstanding there, or or we start to aspire towards other things. But just the simple things in ordinary life, God um, God appreciates. God values. And so an application, a lot of this, uh, this context has to do with work, you know. How are you doing your work? Is it just proper and right? Um, you know, and then just aspire to do that. Simple and plain. Just aspire to do that. So that's John's call to an orderly life. And lastly, what the Lord requires. First, uh, uh, your fourth point, what the Lord requires. And this is Micah. Chapter 6, verse 8. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. 
He says, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And that's, I think, sums it up pretty well. It's just, it's just an ordinary, upright living. It's not necessarily trying to be someone great or do something great, but simply follow God in the ordinary processes and natural things of life. And that 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 gets um, God's reward, literally. Um, there, there's a crown for those who follow God faithfully um, through their lives. And it's through ordinary things, through an ordinary life. So I just want to encourage you all to be encouraged that an ordinary life lived in obedience and faithfulness is very pleasing to God. And he's even promised a crown for those who persist in in simple, ordinary faithfulness to God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your word. And I thank you, Lord God, that you don't make it hard for us to... um, it's not out of reach for us to obey you, to to please you, but just in the simple, ordinary things in life that you call us to, we can please you. I pray for grace and I pray for understanding that we would know how you intend for us to live in the simple and ordinary areas of our lives. Things like work and relationships. Uh, things like how we pray to you, talk to you, our relationship with you. There's all these various simple things, Lord God. Give us guidance and understanding of how you would have us do it. And then just help us to aspire to that. As the scripture say, says, make it your goal to live a quiet life. And I pray that we can do that, Lord God. And I pray that we would experience the peace from it. And even unbelievers would be drawn unto you through it. And I pray that in all of this, you'll be glorified. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.